God our Father, in whom we live and move and have our being, we would become aware of thy love and wisdom. We would open eyes and ears that we may move forward into the light, be channels for the power and radiance of thy truth. May thy light dispel the darkness and the discord of earth, and may thy love bring peace into the hearts of all humankind. May the peace and tranquility and calm reign supreme in our hearts this day. Amen. Now we come to our healing circle. I kind of hate to get up after the song and it feels like I'm breaking up the, the glorious rhythm we have going. Let us open our hearts to the Christ power, wisdom, and love as together we call upon the angels of healing to draw close. We come into the soft radiance of this love as we focus and hold the healing light of the Christ star over the leaders of the world. May their hearts and minds be open to the love, wisdom, and power of God through all of their actions. With hearts full of love and gratitude, we give our grateful thanks. Amen. As Jane said earlier, Susan's talk is on joy. So, of course, the reading is Joy in Life, and it's from 1951. Excuse me. Every son, daughter of the living God should live joyfully. If you analyze our simple words, you will recognize their profound truth. Take as an example of your own life. Were you touching the secret of joy? If you had realized, if you had recognized pure joy in your life, how different you would feel. While speaking of this joy and goodness, let us consider the immense service which would be given to all humanity by any individual who lives in joy and pure goodness without any thought of the result to the self. The ideal, of course, is to do right because you love the right, because the joy within you, the life of the spirit within you, cannot do other than express itself as goodness. The goodness of the individual safeguards the future of the race. And were there no goodness, there would be no future. As a person lives in singleness of purpose to do good, to be good, and to live happily, that person makes an enormous gift to the future. We recognize it is not easy to do good or to be good for goodness' sake alone. We are not preaching to you. We repeat, if you build life upon this wellspring of joy within and express goodness in every action and in life itself, you will be contributing a gift to mankind, the worth of which is beyond any estimate you can form. Let us take for illustration the life of Jesus. If you knew in more detail the manner of his life, its simplicity, and his continual outpouring of the magical white light, you would understand what we mean when we say that joy and goodness are the spring which releases the power of the white magic. 
We can quote no greater example than Jesus for this Western world because much of your life, your traditions, and your religion arose from the Christian religion. Your nation, your family, and your religious life are still influenced by a life which illustrates the profound truth that we are very inadequately trying to express to you. Any other life of spontaneous joy and goodness by its nature is continually pouring forth the divine essence and the creative life force, which is the basis, the core of all spiritual healing. You look back over 2,000 years, which you think is a long time. It is nothing. Jesus was the messenger heralding the new age of Aquarius, and it has taken mankind 2,000 years even to penetrate the truth of the teaching and the wisdom which Jesus brought. Now man has to assimilate that truth to become as the master directed. He has to put into operation those laws of the divine spirit, the law of love and brotherhood, the law of divine healing, which Jesus lived. From the heart of Jesus flowed continually the radiation of a pure white magic. The heart of any man can still receive this same radiation from the heart of the Christ. And if that heart keeps pure and joyous, it can in turn radiate light and healing to all the world. Yes, my children, follow the path of service, of true goodness, spontaneous joy in life, and become in time like your beloved master, Jesus the Christ, a perfect son or daughter of the living God. We find at the very beginning of all religions throughout the world, there was one individual soul through whom came the teaching of brotherhood. Consequently, you will find as you search and perhaps visit places and develop your sensitivity to atmosphere, you will make contact with the ancient brotherhood, which was at the beginning of all religion, the brotherhood of the great white light, white referring to light filled not to color. Now your own common sense will tell you that if there was such a community, all living according to the law of true brotherhood, brotherhood with nature, brotherhood with the elements, brotherhood with the animal kingdom, brotherhood with man, such a brotherhood must live eternally. It can never become extinct. It goes on and on and on through the ages like a golden thread running through all humanity. Those original brothers sent to earth under the direction of the great masters brought to humanity the simple truth of life, of how to live in brotherhood with all life, how to cooperate with the great angels and the nature kingdom. They taught man to worship the Lord his God with all his heart and soul and mind to love his neighbor. They taught him how to enjoy life, to enjoy the fresh air, to enjoy the water in every form, to enjoy the fruits of the earth and the flowers of the earth, and to look to the angels of joy and love and power and peace for his spiritual sustenance, his guidance, and his blessing. Seek and ye, you sh seek and ye shall find, ask and ye shall receive, knock and the door of heaven shall be opened. Don't be lazy. Now get on with your work. Now that's just said in affection not in condemnation or criticism, but just get on with it because the sooner you do, the happier and healthier you will become. God be with you all.